guys welcome back to my channel well, what I have for you today is a haul and it is going to be a Target haul it's a clothing haul and I picked up one thing from Walmart for Maggie for the fourth and it's so cute so let me go ahead and then after I do this haul uh, on the same video I'm going to tell you what happened to us uh, yesterday our refrigerator broke on Sunday and you won't believe what happened when the repairman came. So if you want to know what happened, stick around. You get to hear it at the end of the video, okay? So let me show you what I found, all right? I saw these jeans, and like I said, this is from Target except Maggie's. And I love those collars that go down the side, and then it has that little cut right there, that little slit. I love these. And these are Knox Rose. I really like these. Now these were um, $34.99, okay? But I had never seen anything like this and this is really nice stitching. So I was really excited to see this. So I picked that up. Then I saw this, and I believe this is Knox Rose as well. Look how cool this is. They had it in white and then this blue, but I love this blue. I thought it would be so pretty with these pants. Look at that. But this is really thin material right here. I'll have to wear a little cami. And then from here down... It's got this lining to it, so I liked that. And then here is the back of it. Just so cool because like I said yesterday, our heat index was in excess of 110 yesterday. Whoa, it was miserable, okay? And I don't know what it is today. This is a small, but I love it. And I love that little detail on those sleeves. And then I like this right here so beautiful pick that up i guess i was into blue because then i saw this and it's knox rose too love this and it's like a cold shoulder it comes off the shoulder and you can wear it off the shoulder or really kind of on but i'll probably wear mine off the shoulder and i love look at those little sleeves and then this has that same little um Almost, I think that's like an eyelet or something down through there. And then it is lined as well. So I don't think I'll even have to wear a cami under this, but is that not beautiful? And I love the kind of like the dark blue with that light blue. It looks almost like a faded wash. Love it. Now this, I take it back, I got this at Walmart, okay? I'll go ahead and show it to you. I got my Bugs Bunny t-shirt I wore yesterday in that video, and then I got the Looney Tunes t-shirt. And this was, it doesn't say, but it's a man's t-shirt, and I always get, I think, usually, sometimes a small, sometimes medium. This one is a medium, uh, because sometimes they can run a little tight through the chest and waist, and I don't like that, okay? But I think this was like $7 and something, but I love, that's where I get a lot of my cartoon t-shirts is at Walmart in the men's section. Loved it. Now, we're back to Target, okay? These are sweatpants, but they were having a clearance. And these were normally $24, and they had them on sale for $16.80. And I thought those were so cute. I like the high waist with the drawstring and these pockets. I love them. I, I got the olive green because that's the only um, small that they had. And then at the bottom, look how that is. Loved these. And they got little pleats back here because in the fall, I'll be wanting them. Then, I got this shirt to wear with them. This was all on clearance. This was normally $24, and it was on clearance for $12. But look at that. I love the brown that fades into that 
cream like and then into that like a lime green so pretty I just loved it so I picked that up and then I picked up the orange one they had a blue one like this and they both I didn't tell you on that one they have pockets in here I love pockets so this has pockets right in here both of them and same deal this was $12 but look at that I just love this okay then I saw some tennis shoes and I'm all into tie-dye and things like that so I picked up these pink little tennis shoes now I normally wear a five but if in tennis shoes I can get by with a six because you really can't tell and they're not that much too big these were nine dollars and 98 cents but just look at that I love all those pinks and blues and greens love them okay they were time and true I think yes okay then staying at um, Target I picked up some nail polish okay and this is the olive and June nail polish and it's the seven free so it doesn't have seven of those really nasty things in them and this one just says ECC on the bottom but I love the color of that it's just such a pretty beigey cream then I picked this up for fall can you tell them Ratty? <laughs> this one is all look at that that'll be so pretty in the fall like a brownish with a little hint of a purple then this is the one I had on yesterday in that video it's honest and true I love that blue such a beautiful blue and then here's a pink it is se is what this one's called and that's such a beautiful almost like a it's not a pepto pink but it's a really soft pink i loved it now those were on sale um i forget how much they normally were but they were on clearance and i couldn't believe it so i picked those up then we'll go to walmart for maggie well, for the 4th of July, I wanted her to be all snazzy, and we always take pictures. So I saw this little cowgirl hat with the red, white, and blue there with the star, and then this red rim, and then this little braided blonde pigtails, and I had to get it. Just had to. Um, and I don't remember. Oh, this was $2.98. But I thought she would look so cute you can adjust it and I won't keep it on her long but long enough to take pictures and she loves to wear things like this she she gets so attached to her stuff that it's unbelievable okay and then um, the other day I think I mentioned that we purchased something off of Amazon but I hadn't gotten it yet and we were looking for some way to secure her in the car she has a car seat and she likes her car seat but I don't think it's that safe so my husband was looking and he found this it's called slow okay and I'll link it um, in my Amazon store if you're interested you get two for twelve dollars and something this attaches to her collar right here now I do need to get her I think a stronger collar because she has a piece of plastic that snaps not her collar her vest that snaps to her vest and I don't want I think in a bad crash it might break but this won't and this has like a bungee cord and you can shorten this and it matter of fact we've already used it um, she was in the seat and this hooks into your seat belt it works in my husband's car my car and mom's car so it will tell you what cars it does not work in and it looks like it works in most of them and it slows and doesn't pull hard because you got that bungee cord so like I said I got two for 12 and you can ideally hook she just had one on the other day um, you can hook one on each side of their vest at the back and it just is like a seat belt it holds it and you can put this in your seat belt and really yank hard and it won't come out so I liked that and we're trying our best to keep her safe so that's everything that I found at Target for this haul okay so let me tell you if you stay then you're interested in 
an unbelievable story about trying to get your refrigerator fixed. Okay, so on Sunday, um, our refrigerator just stopped working. Um, it has lights on inside, but the display panel, it's a GE side-by-side, -side, has ice and water in the door, and there where your ice and water, I think they call it the control panel or something like that, it, um, it wasn't lit up at all. So that's how we get our water is through our refrigerator and, so, and our ice and stuff. So we were like, oh man, it's, it blew up. And I was like, man, it was my computer. Then my husband got a big old... Um, lug nut somehow in his tire and had to go get a new tire and now the refrigerator so I was like oh okay so he was like oh man and it's been so hot so he's like well let me call and see if I can find anybody on a Sunday and we knew you pay primo on a Sunday so we found this company and um, here locally and um, I hope to save you all the horrible experience that we had so my we should have known from the beginning conversation that this was stay away and run from these people so my husband called him and he said um, he probably wouldn't have the part on the truck and he didn't know what parts were on the truck now I would think he would keep a record a, a somehow of what parts you do have but with COVID and everything maybe that wasn't possible so we were okay with that sad but okay and he said uh, if he came out that day it would be uh, like double time or something like that so we were like okay well we we won't do that just can you come out tomorrow which would have been yesterday Monday and um, he said yes and my husband wanted to be home so he said well can you come home at can you come here at five and he said no my men like even though they say they're 24 7 that the men like to get off at six o'clock and that they wouldn't be here at five so we were like okay well we'll call you back so we tried to find someone else and couldn't find anyone so my husband called him back and left a message and said you know go ahead and come tomorrow um, just call me and we'll set up a time so in a little bit my husband's phone rang his cell phone but we get a lot of calls from people we don't know telemarketers and if we don't know it we don't answer it if you leave a voice message and we know you we'll get back to you otherwise we're not going to answer so um, I told my husband I was like well maybe that's that guy and he's like well it doesn't come up their name and I was like, oh, okay. He says, if he leaves a message and it was him, I'll call him back. So I was like, okay. So it was him. My husband called him right back. And they were talking and my husband explained. He was just like, my husband said, you know, I would have gotten the phone, but it didn't come up the name of your company. So I just thought it was, you know, like a phantom call. So I wasn't going to answer it. And the man went off about phantom calls and about how it does come up his company's name, and it didn't. Even when he called me later on my cell phone, it did not come up that way. Um, it just comes up a number. No name, just a number. So, and my husband was, was like saying, well, you know, we get a lot of calls, so I didn't answer. You know, he, this man blew this up out of nowhere. Um, and so flags started to go up, but we wanted our refrigerator fixed and we shouldn't have. So the man says, you know what, I'm just going to have to get off of this call. Uh, I don't think I can take the service call. Uh, and so my husband was like, okay. So we were like, that is weird. And then he calls right back and says, you know, you were worried about phantom calls and he wasn't even making any sense. But then he calmed down and he said that he could, someone could be here from four to six. So my husband said, well, I have to ask my wife. So he asked me and I said, fine, that's fine. My husband, you know, Melvin gets home at five. So uh, usually, sometimes earlier. And so I said, uh, fine, that's great. I'll be here. So I filmed my video yesterday and made sure I had everything cleaned up in here. 
and everything done and I had Maggie and at um, about four o'clock he like 15 to four he calls and says a, the different man one of his service technicians calls and says I'll be there at 430 I was like okay that's fine he said I'm on my way well he ended up getting here at 10 after four so I was like man or, or you know five or ten after four so I was like, wow, that was quick. So I let him in and I had Maggie and I came in here in the kitchen and stood right here in this corner and the refrigerator is right there. So um, he said, uh, I said, oh, I hope you can get it fixed today. I'm a very easygoing person. I, you know, I get along with everyone. And he started grinning. He was very polite. And he said, oh, I can't get it fixed today because I don't have it on the truck. And I said, oh, you don't have it on the truck? And he said, no. And I said, oh, okay. And I'm thinking, well, okay. So, you know where the display is? I'll show right you. here is the display. And you can probably see the big dent right in here, thumbprint, and the warp right in there. I, I think you can see it better like that. Move the light. I don't know if you can see it. He took his hands and was prying here and underneath there as hard as he could. And he was a big guy. He was about six feet tall, maybe a little taller. Um, very hefty guy. Wasn't fat, but he was very stocky and strong. And he was prying on with his fingers like that on that front and grunting till he turned red. Then he would take and go underneath it and pry, then come around the edges and pry. And the refrigerator was getting scratched and I noticed the thumbprint. So I said, oh my gosh, it's got a thumb, big thumb indentation there and a wart now. He didn't say a word. He just kept prying. And I'm thinking, there's something wrong. So I said, are you sure that that doesn't have a screw to remove that front, some screws? And he said, oh, it's stuck, it's stuck. It's, it's, it's really on here hard. And I said, we paid a lot of money for that refrigerator when we bought it. Now, albeit that was 12 years ago. And um, he said, I've taken tons of these off. I know how they come off. They just pop right off the front. And after 15 to 20 minutes, he was prying so hard that the refrigerator, the freezer side of the door was coming down. I thought, oh no. So I said, I put my phone on silent and I looked on YouTube. And it showed how to take the front off that little control panel and it has two screws under there and you unscrew them and it pops down and I said I'm not trying to tell you your business or how to do your job because I know you've done a lot of these but I looked on YouTube and this says that it has two little screws there that you have to unscrew to remove that no this just pulls down and he went on he said, and after a while, he said, you know what, there's no need in me continuing to try to pry this off. And I thought, no, I don't think so. But he'd already put a dent in it and a warp. And I probably should have stopped him at the very beginning and said, hey, look, wait, this isn't going to work, so let's just time out. You leave. We're happy. So he says, um... It's just really stuck and there's no sense in me trying to pry this off so I'm going to go outside and call my boss and he starts picking up all his stuff and I thought you want out of here because you know what you did and so he goes outside he's gone for a little bit he barely comes to the door and barely sticks his head in he knocked on the door I opened it and he barely stuck his head in and he said um, I, uh, I'm going to have to get a senior technician to come out here and fix this. Um, and we'll reschedule. And I said, well, when are you going to reschedule? He said, uh, my boss will call you. I said, well, I just want you to know 
I did look and that you do need two small screws and I got a flashlight and I looked up under there and there's two places for two small screws and you unscrew it <laughs> and he leaves. He sits in the driveway a while and he leaves. So I called my husband and I was like, ugh. So I said, okay, I was waiting. I, I thought I'll give him probably 10 minutes, his boss to call me. And then I thought, why? They've put a dent in that thing. I don't know what other damage they've done to it by prying. And why would you push on that delicate control front anyway? I don't know. And while he was doing that, I thought that has been a very good refrigerator or it would have broken it into a million pieces because he was turning red and sweating. He was prying so hard. And that part is my, my fault. I should have stopped him. So I said, I'm calling his boss right now. Got the phone number, I called, he answered the phone. They never say, this is so-and-so with so-and-so, so-and-so, um, how may I help you? Mm -mm. He just answers. I said, are you the, the repairman that was just at my house? Because he sounded a lot like him. No, no, that was so-and-so. I'm so-and-so, I own this company. I said, well, I just want to tell you, he said, yes, the technician said that he was having problems getting that off and um, I would need to come out and take care of it. I said, well, yes. And I said, now it has a big thumb dent in it and a warp in the control panel. Well, this alleged um, thing that happened to your refrigerator, I'm very honest. I know he's worked with millions of people and they may not be. And I said, no, it's not alleged he did it. Well, can you send me some photos? Yes, I can send you some photos. I sent him two. He calls me right back. Okay, now on the first photo you sent me, can you tell me if there's, if you see anything else wrong? And I'm thinking, there was nothing wrong with the refrigerator. I said, I don't know. I'm not a repair technician. I said, there was nothing wrong with it except for the problem I called you about. I said, it's, it has the thumb, big thumb indentation and a warp. Yes, but do you see anything else? I said, well, I don't know, you tell me. And he said, and by this time, I am getting upset, so upset. And he said, I'm in a very uh, precarious situation here. You have to understand where I'm coming from. I can't tell you. I said, well, you know what? I'm in a really awkward situation too. I don't have a refrigerator. I called to get it fixed. He came out. He further damaged my refrigerator, and the refrigerator's still not fixed. And he said, and I told him what had happened. And I told the owner of the company that I'm talking to that after he pried and pried and pried, and I said, he's a big man and he's strong, that I looked on YouTube and I told him, I'm not trying to tell you your business or how to do your job. But I think you need to use a screwdriver. It shows on here. Well, you know, you're telling me that someone that has six years experience, and I don't believe that he did, and had owned his own company in the past, and I don't think he had. He was pretty young. Doesn't mean he couldn't have, but um, it's pretty simple to get something like that off of a refrigerator. And I said, no. I'm telling you, simply stating the facts, he pried and pried and pried and wasn't able to get it off, and now I have a thumbprint and an indentation. So then he goes and he says, well, I'm just going to get off of here because we're just getting argumentative. And I said, no. I said, if that is how, because I knew that's the same thing almost he had told my husband. I said, if this is how you run your business, no wonder, and you have to get off every two minutes because you're so uh, out of it. No wonder your business is like it is. I'm simply telling you your employees need more training and you will fix my refrigerator. And then I said, I don't want you to fix what I called you for. I want the damages repaired. So he proceeded to just go on and on and on and I just got quiet. I didn't say a word and he was still like this. And I just finally, I said, you know what? I'm gonna handle this. 
and I told him I was going to reporting and that he was rude. I had never seen anybody. It wasn't, he didn't want to hear anything that I had said. It was my employee couldn't be incompetent and couldn't, uh, and I know there's a lot of hardworking technicians and I love them. They've gone through the pandemic and everything. And I appreciate them. But this particular service technician, he didn't know what he's doing. So I said, well, never mind, I'll handle it. And I hung up. Then he sends, starts calling me. I don't answer because there's no need. It's this constant circle. And he calls me and he calls me. He finally stops. Then he starts sending me text messages. I really want to resolve this because he had told me on the phone, I forgot to mention this. There's tons that I didn't mention, I forgot that there was nothing he could do for me. There was just nothing. It, he just couldn't deal with this. There was nothing he could do. So he said in the text, I would love to help you. I would really love to, how did he put this? I would really love to resolve this issue for you sincerely. So I didn't respond and then I started thinking, well, maybe he had a bad day. And I'm thinking two bad days. And my gut said, don't mess with him. So when my husband came home, we discussed it. So, and he sent me another text. So I sent him a text and I said, he said, uh, he sent me another text. And he said, can I call you? We have things we need to discuss. And I just sent him a text back and I said, we have nothing to discuss. I want my refrigerator fixed. And he said, he said another text and he said oh but we do have things to discuss like time and other things well I should have known from the other things he just wanted another confrontation he's very argumentative so we were at mom's by this time and she could not believe what all was going on and so um, I said I'll, I'll let you can call my husband and I gave him Melvin's cell number and like I said, Mom was there. Melvin had him on cell phone, on speakerphone, and she heard it all. And he started off by blaming me for everything. It wasn't his technician's fault. Um, it was my fault. And he kept going and going and going. I think he's prejudiced towards women. I don't think he really likes them. And I think when I said, but he was already having trouble for 15 to 20 minutes. That's why I started looking it up and saying, don't you think maybe you need to use a screwdriver? Because he was strong and he's prying up. He's prying, he's prying down. He's prying up from side to side. He even was going to take the door off. I'm like, this guy's clueless. So my husband starts saying, you know, when something doesn't come off, you think you might say, maybe I need to check this further because it's, it's not stuck there's a problem look for some screws and then he starts telling my husband you're just like your wife and he went off on my husband my husband just had to disconnect from the phone then he sends my husband a text and says i really don't understand what the problem is i'm just trying to tell you what happened so learn from our mistakes if especially if you're in the pensacola area if you call someone for repair and they seem a little not like you think they should be stop it right there i would not want anyone to have to go through what we're going through our refrigerator is still broken uh, this evening, we are going to take it out ourselves and order the part, but that'll be days until it can come in. So, um, I, I just, I was blown away. It was not, oh, I'm sorry that this happened to you. I'll be there to see what I can do and rectify the situation. If he had said that, I'd have said, great. And I probably, even though I shouldn't have, I'd have probably let the fingerprint and the warp go just to get the refrigerator fixed. And he tells me, did he charge you? And I said, no, he didn't charge me. He couldn't wait to get out the door. He barely stuck his head back in. Um, 
it's just a mess. So I hope that uh, you have better fortune if you are uh, having a problem with an appliance. I, from now on, will be filming, and I know this sounds over the top, but I guess this is the world we're living in now. When they come in, I'm going to say, uh, would you mind if I film this? Because, and explain why. Or before they even get here, I'm going to tell them. Because at that point, it becomes your word versus their word. And uh, I am going to report him to uh, the Better Business Bureau. And um, I, I just can't believe it. So I wanted to tell you all, be leery. Don't have the mess that we had. And I'm sure you probably won't. You would have been wiser. <laughs> but we really wanted the refrigerator fixed. And it's not fixed and it's messed up more. So I don't know if he did any other damage by pressing on that delicate control panel. I mean, who knows? We may have to get a new refrigerator. I hope not. But anyway, so if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out on YouTube. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe and become a member of our family. And if you subscribe, hit that notification bell and set it to all so you won't miss an upload. So I will see you Friday. I am not sure what kind of video we are going to have. I may mix it up a little bit. I may do a vlog. I don't know. But let me go get Maggie and let her say hi to you. Well, Maggie wanted to show you her hat. She said, Mama, I want to show them what I look like in my hat for the 4th of July. <laughs> she says, I'm a little cowgirl. Say, yes, I am. I'm a cowgirl. Say, hello. Say, I'm in a better mood today. Say, yes. Say, yes, I am. So, until next time. Bye, guys.